This is the ABAC, or Universal Calculator, published by Léon Lalanne in 1843. It's a big nomogram, a graphical calculator that can be used to do all kinds of simple computations. You just line up something down here, something up here, maybe something over here. It has area of circle, vol of sphere, sine, cosine, tangent, weights and measures including Bavarian miles in kilometers, square pieds in square decimeters, molten zinc, a dodecagon. Cast your memory back to the 1840s in Europe, if you will, the tail end of the Industrial Revolution. French mathematician Leon Lalanne looked into the future and saw calculators. He believed that in the future, everybody, even ordinary people, would want to have computing instruments with them at all times. And he was kind of right about that. And what would these computing instruments of the future look like? Well, obviously nobody could carry a mechanical adding machine around with them. No, apparently the calculator of the future is going to look like this. Charts, my man! Lalanne published this thing in a few different books and papers, and he usually presents it as a variation on the standard multiplication table. You know, you find one number over here, one over here, and the product is over there. A multiplication table works great for what it is, but it's just not detailed enough. Actually, this had already been worked out. Lalanne includes this chart in his book on graphical tables and anamorphic geometry. You gotta read the answer on the curves. I like to do 5 times 6, I look at 5 over here and 6 down here. They intersect here, and that point is on the curve marked 30, which is the answer. If I want to do 6 times 6, I look up both 6s, and they intersect here, which is somewhere between the curves for 30 and 40. It's actually a bit more than 35, because the answer is 36, okay? Charts like this had been around for a while. Here's some from a metrology book by Louis Pouchet in 1797. Pouchet gives many versions of this chart zoomed in in different regions for better accuracy. Anyway, in the 1840s, here comes Lalanne's big idea. Those curves are a real pain. They're hard to work with and really hard to accurately print if you want to make your own diagrams. But he discovered that you can straighten out the answer curves by unstraightening the scales. See, the scales on Lalanne's chart aren't evenly spaced. The subdivisions get smaller as you go across. So the scale is weird, and this changes the answer curves. They used to be curved, but now they're just straight 45-degree diagonal lines. This is much nicer to use and much, much easier to draw. Lalanne's chart uses logarithmic scales, which had been known for at least 200 years. This is the basic idea that enabled the invention of the slide rule. But Lalanne was apparently the first person to make a chart with two logarithmic scales on it. The original log-log chart. And it really works. If I want to multiply 5 times 6, I look up 5 here and 6 here. And where they line up, it's on the diagonal line labeled 30. The dark diagonals are 5, so here's 30 and then 35. And the lighter blue lines are the in-between values. So these are 31, 32, 33, 34. You want to do 7 times 4, you look up 7 and 4, and they line up here, which is on the diagonal for 28. Right on! How about bigger numbers? Well, just like on a slide rule, you're going to do the same stuff, but you have to keep track of the decimal places in your head. So for like 34 times 71, I look up 3.4 and 7.1, and I'm getting a value that's on the diagonal slightly above 24. Let's say it's going to be 24.2. And putting the decimal point in the right place, this represents an answer of about 2,420. The real answer is 2414, which is pretty good. And that's the basic idea there, but I should probably tell you a little bit about my chart here. Of course, this high-quality glossy poster is not an original 1850s printing of the chart. I've actually never seen an original printing. This is my own recreation translated into English. After I shoot this video, I plan on hanging it on the wall at school. I think it's pretty cool looking. If you want to print out your own, follow the links down there to download the PDF. My file is vectorized, so you can print it as big as you want, and it'll still look great. Or, now hear me out here, you can buy a printed poster online. This is not a joke. I set up a merch store where you and your loved ones can order high-quality prints of Lalanne's ABAC, the Universal Calculator. 
either my English translation or I got the French original version. Assuming I set it all up right, YouTube should show you some links to my merch store where you can buy it. I've already made one sale, which was me. This poster you're seeing in my video comes from the store, and I'm really pleased with it. So if you want one, maybe buy it there, and they'll toss me a few bones. And at the risk of looking like a self-absorbed YouTube chump, I made some fun stickers and other things. Impress and amaze your friends. These will work great as gifts if you like explaining why things are funny. But enough about me. Let's look at all the extras on this thing. He called it the ABAC. This is something you see in the very early days of computing instruments. For centuries, the only computing instrument with a name was the abacus. So when people started inventing other things, they just called them abacus too. Like Napier's bones was sometimes called the rod abacus, and Gerber's counting board was called an abacus. They just didn't have any other words back then for computing instruments. So he's using the same old word here, but Lalande was very ambitious in his concept. He calls it the universal calculator. I guess that means it can calculate anything. And by anything, he means a random assortment of specific tricks and formulas encoded as special lines on the chart. Like how about the circumference of a circle? That's 2 pi r. We got a special line for that. Like for the circle of radius 3, I look up 3 on this dotted line, read the diagonal as usual for the answer. It looks like just a bit less than 19. You want the area of a circle? There's a diagonal line for that. How about a volume of a sphere? We got a line for that. There's also lines for just plain squares and cubes of numbers. Really, this chart could calculate any monomial equation. That is just a power of x with some coefficient in front of it. Over here, we got special lines for area of triangle. That's an equilateral triangle. Area of pentagon. Area of nonagon. Man, this thing really is universal. On the left side, we have weights and measures, which is a collection of old-timey 1840s pre-metric unit conversions. Units of measurement was a real nightmare in pre-metric Europe. In Boucher's book from 1797, he has a ridiculous 50-page table of unit conversion factors. Every one of these numbers representing a conversion factor can just be represented by a single line on the nomograph and the nomograph can multiply them for you for free. This is an absolute killer feature if you are in this kind of business. Down the right side we have densities of various materials, which would have been useful to somebody, I guess. Molten pewter. Down at the bottom we get the instructions, which are pretty well written. The instructions don't mention the trigonometric scales on the sides though. That's because my version is sort of a hybrid of two different manuscripts I found. The one with the instructions didn't have the trig scales, but I wanted to include them in mine. The trig scales are pretty easy to use. The angles are all read in degrees. So if I want to do something like the cosine of 60 degrees, I look on the cosine scale, which is the furthest to the left, and I find 60. You see 60 is stacked with 120 because those have the same cosine. And the answer you read on the scale in the middle, which doesn't have any labels on it, but it's the same as the scale on the main chart. So anyway, cosine of 60 looks like 5, which of course means 0.5 or 1 half. I have a fairly low quality scan of Lalande's original drawing, and you can see that the drawing is quite good, although there are some imperfections. Like on the cube line and the circle area line, they start at the bottom here very close to each other. That's kind of a coincidence. It's because the circle line touches at pi, which is 3.14, and the cube line touches at the square root of 10, which is about 3.16. He's got it backwards. I did it right on mine. This just goes to show you how hard it was back then to draw a diagram like this. No matter how hard Lalan himself tried to make it accurate, in the end, he still had to hand it off to the printers who were likely to screw it up without knowing any better. Here's another oddity. Check out the trig scales. Between like 96 and 97 degrees, we got subdivisions. One, two, three, four, five, six. What? Actually, that's only half a degree. So really, each degree is divided into twelfths rather than tenths, which is what I would expect. Lalan is using the sexagesimal style degree scale in which each degree is divided into 60 minutes and further divided into 60 seconds per minute. So these markings are not tenths of degrees. They're twelfths of degrees, which are five minutes each. Mathematicians don't really do this anymore. It's a cute little archaic touch, though it would mess me up every time if I needed to use this thing. 
So this is definitely a product of its time, but the concept was very forward-thinking. Lalande's vision of the future had everybody using calculating instruments all the time, which is pretty spot-on. He suggested giving one to every school kid to get them started early, and they say that he planned to post these publicly on every street corner. Universal computing for everyone. You a trader up on the coast who needs to multiply an exchange rate or something? No problem, let me just pull out my enormous square chart and line up some tiny lines. It's a vision of the future which is simultaneously absurd but also kind of spot on. And I think Lalan would be pleasantly surprised to see how it all played out in real life. Sure, nobody really uses or even knows about nomograms anymore, but even my kids carry around universal calculators with them pretty much at all times. And this thing is not just meant for multiplying or whatever. Actually, it's not really meant for anything in particular. I mean, we call it a phone, but everybody knows that's not really the point of it. The real point is it can do anything. Look, I can even use the ABAC on it. I could even make this video with it. I could even watch this video with it and include that in this video. I could even leave a comment.